I remember I remember when I first came into the league, right? So say if I did a, a I fouled somebody or, you know, I might have traveled. That ref would actually tell me what I did. And then, like, during the timeout, he might have even showed me, like, no, you caught the ball like this, and then when you turned up, you shuffled your feet a little bit. All right. I respect that. You explained it to me. You know what I'm saying? Walk me through it. I respect that. It seemed each year that that relationship between the player and the ref became more and more distant. You had a lot of veteran referees and who were in there, you know, at the time I came into the league, in their late 40s, early 50s, you know, but they were great referees, you know. Again, they talked to us. And it seemed like as it went on more and more, that's when the referees got the attitude of like, oh, well, these fans came here to see me. Shut up. You can't say nothing to me. Don't talk to me. Just Hold up. Time out, dog. How crazy. You can't tell me. You said I traveled or you said I did this and you can't tell me how? Like, you can't share that with me? Oh, no. Get away from me. This and that. Oh, so then, all right. So, cause see, before that, I ain't never had no problem with no referees. I ain't never had no problem with no referees in high school. I ain't never had no problem with no referees in college. Soon as I got to the league, that's when it became the problem with these referees. Why? I don't know. I never did nothing to any of these dudes for my name to be on that list. But you want my name on that list? Fuck it. Here it is, then. I'm going to give you everything. No, I don't care about these damn fines because... Number one, it could be a tax write-off. Number two, where does the fucking fines go? That's been the biggest question amongst anyone, you know, who in my era and uh, uh, my persona. That's what we want to know. Like, all right, I'm getting fined. All the, where does it go? You know, they say it goes here, but they don't never give you no backup. Now, everything else, they're going to give you a trace of. Oh, well, you did this tech this day. Da -da 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 -da. All right, give me that same printout on where these fines go. And then the third one was, it was just the fact that, look, I wasn't, I wasn't going for that shit because the way I was, like, look, yes, okay, Michael Jordan works hard. He's the face of the league. Uh, you know, you got guys that's the face of their team. They work hard, but yo, don't bullshit on me. And and a couple of other players, are, we out here working hard too. Yeah, so we might not be that household name or we not, might not be the face on TV commercials to, to sell the game on Sunday afternoons, but damn, I'll be damned if I'm not out here working just as hard as he is to score this point, to grab this rebound, to win this game. So, damn, I can't get a fair shot at that. Y'all just going to sit here, suck dick, like, oh, that's that's so-and-so. Oh, we just going to get him the benefit of the doubt. Huh? Yeah. So, I told a referee one day. I said, look. I said, who's who's the uh, top power forwards to you? So, you know, it, and this is all real quick. It was like, you know, towards the end of a TV timeout or something. It's all real quick. I said, who's the top power forwards to you? He, he was like, uh, and not no particular order. He was like, you, um, KG, and Tim Duncan. I was like, okay. I said, all right. I said, what are they averaging? He was like, uh, you know, mid-20s, high-20s. I said, okay. I said, how many times they go to the line, though? A couple times. Then he started to look at me. He was like, they go to the line a lot. I said, would you say they go to the line more than me? He said, yeah. I said, okay. So I said, those are my peers. Now, y'all already showing favoritism by sending them to the line more. And I'm not going to the line, but I'm getting fouled just as much. But here's the crazy thing. So I must be good a little bit if I got just as many wins as them. But I don't have the numbers. I ain't got as nearly as many points as KG got. But look at that win column. To me, that's where it was at. So, I, you know, with the referees, that's why I was just saying, as I got older, I didn't have to do all the cussing or come with attitudes. No, I'm just hitting them with logic now. Like, oh, so y'all got that email last night, huh? Oh, then they flare all up. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, I know about y'all email shits. <laughs> no, no, let's not forget that. I know about that. 
Boston, man. Look, it's been an and ongoing you're, and you're war. you're referring to emails from the league with, this is what we discussed in Whistleblower, but emails from the league that are telling the referees to officiate the game certain in a certain way and against mm-hmm. certain players. Yeah. And so you were cognizant of that at yeah. the time. Oh, yeah, I was, I was very because to me, I saw it. And uh, he'll tell you what I always used to say. Y'all making it too obvious. I thought he was crazy. I y'all know. making it too obvious, too blatant. Y'all making it too obvious. Yeah. I said, I said, y'all want the fans to be able to watch the games, but y'all sitting up here calling a lot of these bullshit calls is doing what? Slowing down the game. Y'all want the fans to see the dunks and all that shit. Yeah. So call that shit both ways or don't call that shit at all. What do you guys think is the officiating better today? Than it Hell was no. Years ago. Man, I get so mad watching the officiating now and and this is what I think, and, I, and I'm not trying to single him out because I love him as a player. I love, you know, he's great for basketball. But when I watched Draymond Green's antics, it kind of, <laughs> I kind of, I remember how they had they used to handle my, you know, she, you know, and Draymond Green can cuss these motherfuckers out. He can get in their face. He can do all the antics and this, 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 and that, and they won't say nothing. He damn near got a choke on them refs now for them to give him a tech. And it's like, why are you treating? No disrespect to him, but. If some other person did that, that didn't have that same cachet, you taking them, you get them up out of here. But then you know, you know, you get you're protecting players and doing mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I just don't think the league is evolving. I think the league is just such. It's just became so such entertainment now, way more yep. than what it was. Like you know, like like we played, we wasn't friends with nobody. I wasn't friends with another NBA player until I went to another NBA team. I wouldn't fuck with nobody if you wasn't a Blazer. Man, what's up, bro? During the game, but after that, we ain't really popping it. And mm-hmm. Now everybody's friends, you know, everybody's this, this, and that is some kumbaya shit. So it's like <laughs> it's like the competitive fiber, you know. I, I love to see the playoffs a little bit because the competitive fiber come out, but just going out there, I mean, I, I went to a game one day, and these both teams combined for like 73s before halftime. Mm-hmm. And I was so disgusted because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a slasher. I'm like, man, I'm a quality basket guy. Like, everybody's not Steph and Clay, and everybody wants to be Steph and Clay, and I know the game's evolved, but. I don't like that shit. You know what I mean? And, and 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 the way the referee is calling stuff, you can't foul guys, you can't touch guys, you can't. There's so many rules to protect guys, so that it makes it easier for them to score. So it just ain't fun to watch anymore because we got very very skilled guys that don't have to really, you know what I'm saying, show their skills anymore because the league is, you know, has made it easier for them. I think, in my opinion, not saying they can't play, but just more like to get a shot off, to create space and all that stuff. It's so much easier now. And it's it's. But it's the fact that they got to follow that book, though, because there's it's, it's some guys that played in the league, that ref now, that know that some of that shit they call is some bullshit, but they got to follow the book. You know, a lot a lot of the referees today, they don't explain why they called it, this and that. They come with the whole attitude, and I know y'all have seen it. Get away from me. I'm not talking about this. So. Leave, me, leave me alone. That's when they no. go off. So whenever y'all see him going at the ref and going off, that's that's what the ref does. I <laughs> love that ref impression. But he like, oh, yeah. that's, he that's how they do it, too. Or, or he and might I'm tell like, you to shut up. Yeah. Shut like, your ass up. Ho, ho. All right. <laughs> and I, I had to tell him this a couple times on some few occasions. Look, don't let that whistle fool you. I was like, that whistle gives you somewhat of a little bit of authority on this 94-foot hardwood for 40 minutes, 48 minutes. I said... But you got to go home. You got to leave this arena. David Stern and them cops ain't out there now. (laughs) But guess who can be out there? I could be out there. I could have had some homies out there. Because it's it's so simple. We the only show in town. Guess what? It ain't hard to figure out where a billion-dollar company is going to keep their employees. They ain't going to have them motherfuckers at the Super 8. No, they're going to be in another five-star hotel away from the team. But you think motherfuckers done that? You think I didn't have people that worked in different cities that, yo, yeah, so-and-so, them, them cats is here. Y'all going to have so-and-so tomorrow as referees. Or the city's so small, you might be out at dinner, and you won't see the same referee crew at dinner. Oh, yeah, so now it's like, ah. Oh. So if I really wanted to be a dickhead the way that y'all trying to portray me to be, I could have, oh, I could have had ample opportunity to fuck a lot of refs up oh. off the court. Oh. Well, for real. What were the worst things that refs did to you or said to you during games? Oh, just just the same thing. I would say, you know, shut up, get away from me. Um, I've said far worse things though. Man, listen. You know, I I told I told one ref, I was like, look, 
y'all keep talking shit. Y'all keep, you know, bullshitting me. I said, I'm going to pay somebody to burn your restaurant down. <laughs> Told another ref. I said, um, I said, you know, y'all, y'all keep fucking me and my team. This is when I was in Detroit. I said, y'all keep fucking me and my boys with these calls and shit. I said, I'm going to hire a hacker to go into that little email account. <laughs> oh, the referee was like, tried to give me that look like, huh? I'm like, oh, oh, trust me. I know about that email account that y'all got from David Stern probably this morning in that locker room. I said, don't let it fool you. I said, y'all take this shit for granted. The same way that the NBA can look into a lot of things. Man, you don't think that if if me and Bonzi pay somebody, pay the uh, hacker 100000 hey, yo, can you get these emails for me? You don't think that they could do that? Sure. Even with, yeah, it's encrypted and all that. Da -da 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 -da. No. The same way that NBA keep tabs on us, like, yeah, we could keep tabs on them too. But they don't like that, though. You know, they don't like it when you he, call them up. He used to, before games, he used to, Rashid would look at the referees and then communicate to you guys in the locker room, right? Like, well, oh, no, man. He, he would, he would, what she do, like, before the game, every you're going to get game notes. So you're going to get game notes of probably about 15, 20 pages of all mm -hmm. the teams, you know, the team that we're playing, you know, the stats, and just some, some, some stats and stuff. But it's always going to be on there who's refereeing the games. He's going to the first thing he's doing is going to that. And this is what I knew. She, she you know, the referees, like, you know, she she was always good at he get into it on the court. He can, you know, brush it off his shoulders or whatever. But I remember this one game we was fucking around. It was our man Donahue. Donna, he said some shit to she, and you know, she don't went crazy. Ah, he going crazy. We hold him out of the eye. Boom, get out of here. So usually we go into the locker room when they boom, get out of here. She, we, you know, after the game, whatever, she's going to always be in the jacuzzi or somewhere to stretch in and be like, you know, he's going to come in. Hey, fellas, my fault. He always do that. I'm sorry, man, my bag. You know what I'm saying? Woo, woo. We're not tripping. But on this occasion, when Donna, he did that to him, you know, we come into the locker room and Coach used to give a speech, you know, oh, oh, she just standing by his locker, fully dressed. I mean, fully dressed, everything on it. And he just got that look, and he, he, he's, he's bopping. He ain't got no headphones on, but he's doing this. <laughs> so I look like, oh, man, my boy got that look in his eye. So Pip give me that look like, hey. <laughs> like, hey, man, don't take no shower. Get dressed right now. <laughs> what you talking about? He's like, man, go, go make sure you be with she. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I ain't take no shower. I'm taking all my year, uniform, I'm putting my shit on. As soon as we one, two, three, boom, she gone. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm trying, like, all right, fuck, what, am I, what, what is my boy on? So I'm trying to get to my car. So we go out the tunnel. I'm trying to get to the car. So the, the, the tunnel is where the, I mean, when you go out the to loading the, the loading docks, you got the bus out there, all our cars and all that shit. So I'm trying to get out there and run out there. She just standing in front of his car. Like, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? What you doing, man? You all right? I was just like, bro, you all right? Woo, woo. He's seven foot me. So he only see everything at a seven foot plateau. I'm only six. I'm like, she, he ain't looking down at me. He ain't doing nothing. He just seven foot me. And he just doing that stuff. And I'm just like, she, man, what's going on? He wouldn't say shit to me. Everybody's walking out the tunnel. Everybody walking out the tunnel. She just looking. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Sees down the heat. <laughs> right at this motherfucker. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, it was crazy because I was out there talking to Brev. Um, I think we were playing Memphis. Was it Memphis? Yeah, because I was standing out there on the loading dock. I was by the car, and then when I seen him come, um, I started shooting the shit with him. You know, like, hey, how's the wife? You know, this and that, how we always mm -hmm. do, right? So then it was Donahue, Steve Javi, yep. and uh, I forgot the third referee. I think it might have been Scott something. I can't remember his last was name. It Foster? But um, might have been could have been. So all three of them walked by, right? So... I blurted out, yeah, I'm going to get my motherfucking money back from that bullshit tech, too. And then, you know, he stopped and turned back and was like, what? I said, yeah, bitch, you heard me. I'm going to get my motherfucking money back. So Brev, like, you know, he trying to tell me, like, to chill. I'm like, nah. I said, I said, I know what the fuck they out there doing. I said, his ass is fucking cheating. That's what the fuck he doing. And then he started to walk towards me. And so I met, I met that motherfucker halfway. So we going in there and we yelling back and forth, fuck you and all this other shit. And I told him, I said, I said, first of all, with me being who I am, if that man right there would have felt as though that I was throwing the ball at him, you don't think he would have called the tech on me uh, with the relationship that we got? And, and it, you're talking about Jabby. Yeah. You and Jabby uh, had a... Man, fuck Steve Jabby. <laughs> and so I'm like... I'm like, you don't think he would have set up here and called the tech on me? Why did you have to come 40 feet from the other side of the court to call the tech? I said, yeah, bitch, you heard me. I'm going to get my motherfucking money back, too. 
So, you know, they separated us, broke us up. Next morning, um, I get called into uh, Witz's office and uh, NBA security on the phone. So now I'm like, what the fuck y'all want? Uh, well, we just want to know what happened last night. Bitch, y'all already know what happened last night because y'all suspended me seven games. So what the fuck you calling me for? Y'all already know what happened. Why are you going to wait till you suspend me and find me and then call me to find out what happened? No, nah, fuck out of here, hung up. For, the, so for that whole whole time with them when I was going through that Donahue shit, I wasn't talking to NBA security. Because I'm like, for what? Y'all motherfuckers already find me. Anytime, so made the motherfuckers come out. They came out to Portland. Um, yeah, can we talk to you after practice? All right, yeah. After practice, you know, do the routine, whatever we had going on, no matter if it was like in the back with the hot tub or, you know, getting a, a lift in after practice, whatever. All right, I did whatever I had to do. Shower and I'm the fuck out of there. I ain't talk to them motherfuckers. I'm like, it's no need. Y'all just want to put this shit down for y'all's sake because... What are you gonna talk to me for when you already find me? You already you already set down the punishment. So they suspended me seven games for that Donahue shit. It cost me uh, 1.2 or 1.3 for them seven games. Cause that was like, I think it was my first or second year into my big contract that I just signed with Portland, right? So I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers. So, you know, that's when the beef picks up with me and the refs. So then I get traded from Portland, make a pit stop here in Atlanta, then Atlanta to Detroit. So I'm in Detroit. Still, I, I go into the meeting with the guys when I first got there. Yo, what's good? I love y'all. I just want y'all to know it's going to be a whole lot of bullshit that come with these referees that I'm bringing that they're not going to give y'all no calls. They're not going to, um, you know, do this. They're going to turn a blind eye to a lot of shit. So I said, I'm apologizing to a lot of it now because I know it's the shit that I'm bringing with me from Portland, right? So, you know, we went through the whole year. We ended up winning. And that next year, it was either that next year or the year after one of the two, I'm on a family vacation. So it was me, my wife, um... Jermaine, him, day wives, girls, and Jermaine's brother. We all on a yacht. We out in the middle of the motherfucking Mediterranean Sea. We out there having fun, jet skiing, jumping off the boat, all this shit, right? Good time. So, good time. Go back to my room, look at my, damn, 12 missed calls, all from my mother in law. I'm like, oh shit, the kids. Hey, hey, what's up, mommy? What's up? Everything okay? Everything okay? Yeah, baby. Everything's fine. She was like, I don't know what happened, but it's a lot of reporters outside the house. I said, huh? She said, yeah, so it's a lot of reporters. I said, well, did anybody come on the property, knock on the door, any of that nature? She was like, no, they didn't do nothing. Else. I said, all right, cool. I said, we good then. So hang up with her. Like 30 seconds after I hang up with her, Joe D calls me. So he's like, hey, she, what's up, what's up? Hey, hey, she, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, she, what's up? How you doing, man? All right, all right. I'm like, what's good? He was like, um, I'm going to just cut straight to the chase. You was right. I'm like, like, right about what? What are you talking about? He was like, you haven't seen the news or anything? I'm like, man, we in the middle of the ocean. Ain't no TVs on this boat at all. <laughs> and... He's like, all right, all right. Well, they got your man Tim Donahue on a wiretap talking about fixing the games and this and that. I was like, I just let out a big ass yeah. Ah! I told you, I knew it, I knew it. So everybody thought I was crazy with that whole Donahue situation and dealing with the referees. But did you ever have a problem with the referee after Donahue? Yeah. I mean, of course you have a problem. <laughs> of course you have a problem. <laughs> Terrible question. Yeah. <laughs> you, think, you think he didn't what he did? Did you have... So that's... Because the Donahue incident, it seems like what... Again, we're looking for just turning points. So Donahue incident, that's when the referee... You didn't have a good relationship with guys like Javi before that and a handful of others. But after Donahue, it seemed like all the referees... And again, referees are yeah. a, a cult. Yeah. And they're it's 55-ish guys all cut from a very similar cloth who are very mm -hmm. tight-knit, as we know from various phone records. So with that being said, 
Donahue, that moment, is, was that basically a memo to every ref, an email to every ref saying, Rasheed Wallace is that guy now. So for the next, yep. I think it was three or four years, it got turned up. And by the time you got to Detroit, that was something you had to warn your entire team about. Yep. Like, this is a thing. And and in Detroit, did all your guys rally around you? Is that part of what brought you guys together, you think? Well, it, that and the fact that some some other things that I didn't even know. Like, shit, I didn't know that the referees ain't like Chauncey. I'm like, huh? I'm like, you know, playing against, I'm like, Chauncey, I never heard him, you know, cuss no ref out or just to say anything or do anything for him to be on their bad side. I'm like, and it was who else? It was somebody else that they had a problem with. But, yeah, once I came there, it amped everything up for it because now I'm being a dick. So now with every every questionable call, and I'm not saying I never fouled or none of that. Yeah, I fouled me a whole lot of motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. But, some of them calls, it wasn't no fouls. So I'm being a dick about things. So, you know, you know how you line it up. Somebody shooting a foul shot, so I'm right here. And you know how sometimes the refs are right there under the basket. So I'm, you know, I'm right, I'm like, mm. I'm like, damn. Must have got that call too, huh? <laughs> or I'm saying little slick shit, like, oh man, so you in you in bed with your boy? That's how y'all doing now? Oh, I'm I'm giving them all. So I'm I'm going I'm saying every damn reference I can to them cheating without saying that they cheating. And so yeah, they would get mad with me. What did you say? I'm like, you heard me. Like, oh, say it again, and I'm gonna get you out of here. Look, let me let me tell you this, dude. If it gives you power to think that okay, you're throwing me out of the game, okay, go ahead, you can do it. But again. After the game is public, you got to go home. A lot of those referees got side businesses. You got to go home. So now, you, that, and that, that's shit they don't think about. Like, I, I got beef, had beef with this one referee when I was in New York. Gave me a tech because I fouled a dude twice in the same play. Yeah. So, he had me out, like, on, on the mid wing, and he drove. So, you know, I'm sliding, I'm sliding, and, um, body checking. So I did foul him. Boom, body checked him. So the ref blew the whistle, and he kept going. All right, well, he kept going. All right, I'm going to keep going. So foul the nigga again. Yeah. I'm like, how I get a tech for that? Oh, you can't do that. I'm like, look. I said, so I went to him. I said, logic. I said, so let me ask you this. I did foul him. I admitted it, and yes, I did. I said, so if he would have made that bucket when I fouled him, would you have counted the and one? He's like, yeah, because you fouled him and the play was continuing. I said, oh. I said, so I get a tech because I did foul him, but now I'm not letting him finish the and one and I get a tech? Oh, so I was in this ref ass and looked into his shit and found out that him and his family is, is uh, got a bunch of fighting cocks. <laughs> they fight monsters, right? You would find that. So out. after okay, so I kept saying I was like, yeah, like messing with them cocks, huh? <laughs> so you know, in 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 our language, we know what that means. But in in that field, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you fighting your roosters, you fighting some cocks, huh? It's like, oh, I kept messing with him that whole time for my last for the rest of that year. Every time he had, I was like, yeah, we got the cock fighter. <laughs> so. I did, I did my part to piss them off after that whole Donahue joint, but y'all can't get mad at me because I called y'all out. Did they? Did any referees apologize to you after Donahue? Yeah, right. I asked yeah, that question, no, 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 no answer. No, Donahue did apologize to you on our podcast. No, no, he said, he said any referee after that. Like after oh, that whole... Oh, after whole, that whole, Yeah, okay. has any ref after that. Okay. Nobody came up to you and said, hey. Fuck no. <clears throat> did the refereeing get better? For you, for you, was there less? I mean, there was obviously less text at the, later in your career, but after Donahue, was there a softening amongst referees where you were less of a bad guy? No, I mean, I like again, I didn't hate all referees. There are, there were some good referees in the NBA who shot it to you straight that went old school. Hey, you had your hand on his hip, you know what I'm saying, or you know, you tripped him up. Some, 
But they would tell, they would talk to you. That's all it takes is a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. So some referees, yeah, I, I had a pretty good rapport with, but other ones like, man, fuck you. So who are the guys you you didn't like, Javi? You liked Joey Crawford, like you and Joey Crawford got along really well. Joey and Joey Crawford and I, I think, had a better relationship or a better understanding as I got older. He was already a veteran referee, you know, ref finals and uh, other Hall of Fame players, all of that. And with me going through my tirade sometimes, I looked at him as a league darling, you know, one of the league boys. Mm -hmm. What changed my mind about Joey Crawford is when I seen he had beef with Tim Duncan. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. Like, Tim Duncan is probably, like, one of the most nicest guys, in the world. you know what I'm saying, most nonviolent guys that you can meet. And I'm like, damn, what did he do to piss off Joey Crawford? And I, I, to this day, I still don't know what it was, but when I saw Joey, you know, reffing harder against him and, you know, a tech here and there against Tim Duncan, I was like, all right, I like Joe. He's going against the system. And from that point, he started declining with a lot of the bigger games on TV because now, oh, he's not going with the program. So Joey Crawford and I started to get along, you know, and come to find out um, he's, he's a Pennsylvania native, Philly boy too. So, Well, they're all Philly boys. Turns yeah, out. or around Philly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... So I, you know, I sat and talked with Joey one day. I think we were we met at the Philly Sports Hall of Fame, and you know we shot the breeze for a quick second. It wasn't nothing personal. Like I, to this day, I fuck with Joe Crawford yeah. because I'm not. I'm gonna call it how I see it, which that was always his thing. Um, uh, what's Tommy's last name? Tommy Nunez. Tommy no, not Tommy Nunez. Punk ass. Him and Junior. <laughs> um, no. Another ref named Tommy? Yes. Oh, Tom Washington. Tom Washington was an, was another ref. Well, him and I came in together. Was that the black referee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him and I came in together. Yeah. And again, that's another referee who explains it out. He don't just, Burr! you fouled him, get away from me. Yeah. No, he gonna go through whatever it was. Communicates. Yeah. And that's that's the whole key, is the communication. But they would rather come with the conceited shit, like, oh, well, I got my family out here and I dare you show me up. Hey, yo, ain't nobody come to fucking see you. <laughs> and it also came to the point where they got some calls down from the league. If, if you got a star player, it's a big televised game, he's not going to get a lot of calls. Like, don't call a lot of fouls on him because they're going to want to see him. Like, and that's the other thing to me, you get these analytic guys, right? Mm -hmm. How the fuck can you play 48 minutes and only foul twice? How the fuck can you play for 10 plus years and only foul out of a game like three times? It's virtually impossible. So with that, it's that, that you got to see the favoritism with that. 100%. You gotta see the, and the who played ten plus years and only felt. No, out. I mean I'm just saying, in like general. In, in general, a period. Of, a lot yeah. of people, a lot of the darling. Yeah, in, in in general, like how many games Michael Jordan fouled out of? Uh, very few. I think LeBron, same thing. LeBron's <laughs> only fouled out of. And and Bron been playing Cole, twenty years. Cole probably didn't foul out too many. It, That's what I'm playing, saying. He played hard, D. They getting they get them emails. They get them phone calls. Look, don't call. That's why. Why you think Roger Bell ain't in the league? Or, or the way that he was put out of the league because he D'ing up. D'ing up Kobe. He had the audacity to play defense. Yeah. Yes. What's wrong with you? Against, against our stars. And then here it is what happened. When Roger first started to became that, that defensive presence, locking motherfuckers up. Mm -hmm. Now you got Phoenix versus L.A. Sunday afternoon, NBC. Hey. Before the motherfucking 10 minute mark, Roger Bell got two fouls. Now he's on the bench. And were you guys all watching this as players? How did you feel watching this? Because I've gotten to know you pretty well, and I know you have a code, and I know it's, there's a very clear line between just and unjust. But he's, he used to say that, though. 
Now we've been in the locker room. Remember I was talking about the notes he look at? She just said, like, man, Bonds, man, we're going to get two fouls in the first quarter. And I, you know, I'm young. I'm like, man, you tripping, bro. And we always got two fouls in the first quarter. But the big games, you know, the big games, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the Lakers or whoever else, was, it was the big game that week. We always got a one of us would always get it, or both of us. And it would be crazy. And I used to be like, man, this dude. Like, I thought, you know, everybody thought it was crazy. But I used to be like, man, this dude know what he's talking about because he would just call out so much shit and look back on it. He was calling out everything. And, you know, it sucked that, that we had to play under them them type of conditions because it kind of unevens the playing field. And, you know, like I said, our whole mm -hmm. trajectory could have been totally different. You know what I'm saying? If they would have just called it the way they saw it or just been fair and human. Shit, it's, it's one referee. I'm not going to mention her name. But <laughs> if she seemed to so have... Sick. Damn near every game when I was in Portland and KG was in Minnesota, she seemed to have damn near every fucking game that him and I matched up against each other. And what happened? She picks up a, I'm going to pick up the first foul for sure before the 11 minute mark. And then it might go down to that eight minute mark or that seven minute mark and I'll get that second. So I asked her one day, I'm like, yo, I'm like, do you like him or something? <laughs> I'm like, every time you reffing and I'm going against him, how I always get two quick fouls. I'm like, what the fuck is the hold up here? <laughs> like, damn, y'all put me out real, real quick on these matchups when you reffing. So what, I, what like, did she I, say? There was um, there's two refs in that era. there was two female refs in that area. They're so. not they're not gonna say nothing. Yeah. You know, they they just get it. It's, it's all said with their looks. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So as soon, soon as I, as soon as you say something about it, you know, they'll talk to you or they'll talk to me or they talk to me once I call them a couple of motherfuckers, you know, <laughs> bitch ass motherfuckers and all that. Oh, now you'll talk to me giving me a tech. Now you want to hear what the fuck I got to say. But when I come to you nice and calm, like, damn, what made you call that? Or you didn't see him shoot me the elbow first or nothing like that? No. Oh. Okay, now you want to fucking, you don't want to say nothing. But when I start to get wild and act like a nigga out here, now you want to say something to me, talk to me, so you can look like like I'm the the wild guy. Like, oh, no, she, I didn't do nothing, and she just went off on me. No, motherfucker, all you got to do is just talk, say something, communicate. Like, damn. So but, was, your, was your frustration oftentimes with refs that lack, so was it lack of communication led to you getting a little more boisterous in order to get their attention and demand answers? Um, it wasn't necessarily me trying to get uh, more boisterous with it, you know, because for one, I'm already loud. But um, <laughs> it was just the fact that, no, I wanted it to be seen. Like, look, as you just mentioned a second ago, it's a fine line between right and wrong. Yo, all that gray area shit, nah. If you see he fouled me, yo, call it. So, perfect instance. Dealing with the referees again. I'll give y'all this story real quick. We were playing Cleveland in Detroit. Um, I'm at the top of the key. Ilgauskas guard me. I got the ball. I swing the ball. We put up a shot. Ilgauskas breaks. So, boom, I run with him. So, Cleveland's coming down on a break. So, Ilgauskas is the first one down. So, he comes to the middle of the paint. He do everything he's supposed to as a big run straight to the front of the bucket and post up. Well, he did that. But the thing is, when he turned up, boom, shot me a quick, dirty bow. Hit me, boom, oh, shit, motherfucker. So when he caught the ball and turned up, hmm, that's when I fouled him. That's when I bust his head, right? So, um, you know, he's like, oh, this and that. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, you know what you did. So the refs come over, yeah. And I'm like, no, he ain't going to run up on me. You ain't got to hold me. I, I know he ain't going to run up on me. Uh, so then, after the game, the reporters, oh, she, why did you get a flagrant foul to Ogalskis and this and that? I mean, I know the history. They, they always play you guys tough. I'm like, dude. I'm like, did you see what he did? Oh, he just came down and post up. All right, go watch the tape. Go watch the replay. Never heard nothing else about that. The motherfuckers never came because they saw the dirty bow. Okay, now they see why I did what I did. A week later, we're in Cleveland. Right? I specifically remember this. On the left block, Jack Neese is down on the baseline as the ref. <laughs> and I'm posting Ilgowskis. Huh. I got the ball. 
So uh, I'm starting to shimmy, make my move. So I'm going to the mid, fake and middle to come back baseline. So when I go to fake middle, here come Varajal and wipes all three of us out. Ah, it wasn't even a basketball foul. He was just trying to hurt me, wipe all of us out, right? So all three of us fall. Jack Neese gives all three of us a tech. So, you know, at first I didn't know it. So, you know, I get up, I'm going to the line and everything because I know I'm about to shoot. And then I hear the announcer boy, yeah, technical foul, Rashid Wallace. Whoa! <laughs> Time out. How did I get a tech, Jack? I'm trying to shoot the ball. I ain't throw no dirty elbows. I'm turning up, making my move. And he comes right beside. I said, how do I get a tech for trying to score? You know what he said? Yeah. We were told that whatever went on between you guys is to give everybody a tech. Mm. Oh, okay. Thank you for saying that, Jack. I said, you just proved my point mm. on what I, what I say a lot about these motherfuckers in the emails yeah. and the phone calls. Yeah. Like, I appreciate that, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. I, ain't, I still haven't seen that to this day. A dude trying to score gets fouled and he get attacked. <laughs> well, you know, it's almost like that look you got when you looked at the ref down and he gave you a tech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did he throw you out? Did he's like, yeah, what? No, he threw me he out. He threw you out. He threw you yeah, out. He threw me out. That was a Scary crazy. Scary ass ref. So, He's a, but you were seven footing him, though. I was seven footing him, yeah. but he know he was out there cheating that shit too, though. But you know these dudes are like five five shit. It, that ain't my fault. They got Napoleon complex. <laughs> You shouldn't be working with big ass athletes. <laughs> she can, you know what I'm saying? Shit, she can go looking at them. Go work with the Shetland ponies over at the zoo or something, man. <laughs> you know the little goats or some shit. <laughs> this dude, fancy. look. How you know I'm looking at you? If you not what? Looking at me. If you supposed to be refing to see what's going on out here, you won't know I'm looking at you. I'm not part of the play. Yeah, I caught the ball. I swung the ball. I know the play ain't for me, but I'm looking right at you. And that bullshit that you sitting out here doing. And he knew he was some, was some bullshit to this day. Do you think there were other Donahues? What? Hold up. It's a billion dollar company, bro. One, as he like, as Stern like to call it, one lone wolf, lone wolf is not going to cause an upstir in a billion dollar company like that by himself. And we already, it's, it's already a, a public known fact. We seen who he was talking to. So, so how do guys in the league? That's my big thing with Scott Foster is that Scott Foster has never had to answer for this yet. Yet, so there is in the Pedowitz report, which was the report that the NBA commissioned after the Donahue scandal. Foster said that he is willing to talk with the media about everything, and that he's willing to let a member of the media follow him around for a week to understand his basically how a NBA referee operates during the season. And he's, it's been 15 years. He's never said, never had to say a word. And if you in the media, or as a former player or member of the media, whatever we are, if you say anything about Scott Foster, you're immediately dismissed. And again, like the NBA, I just request a comment from the NBA on this a month ago, right? Yeah. Um, nice. The Scott Foster element, like, what, how, if I were, if I were Chris Paul, if I'm James Harden, no, oh, man, he hates them guys. I mean, that's Chris Paul has not won a playoff game. Chris Paul in his career is a little over 500, I believe, in playoff games. His entire career, 0 and 14 when Scott Foster it, refs a game. And that's probably how is he still refing, guys? Like, cause he's a he's a league boy, a company man. Yeah, and he probably got so much dirt on the league that shoot, he'll burn this whole motherfucker down if if they get but, it. But it's it's all dirt that they supplied that they wanted him to do. So, so, so that, much, that's, that's the I, problem with refereeing, right? There's so much dirt yeah. that it needs to be, you need, to clean it up, you need to actually clean it up. You need to start from scratch. Right. You need to. It can't affect the bottom line, though, because if we start affecting the bottom line, we got to keep going because if we start losing some money. Well, that's the only we, thing, right? You know if, what I mean? we the only way the refereeing, this is my frustration <laughs> in all the work that I've done on this, right? The only way that it can act, it has to blow up so hugely. Something else has to happen. There has to be another Donahue type situation. It's going to happen. It's, I mean, it's something. Something's going to leak out because you got to think about it. It could. It could be tomorrow. It could be ten years from now. But if you think about every billion dollar company or corporation, at some point, they're going to do some dirt mm -hmm. to get to the top, and eventually that dirt is going to come out. No matter if it, it could be tomorrow or, like I said, years later. But all that we got. We got the lead of it now. 
with that whole FBI investigation looking into Donna Hay and yeah. they got the other referees, you know, on the whole little Donna Hay text and all that shit. Other shit like that, it's gonna come out. Yeah, hundred percent. It's gonna cause you gotta think about it. just look at how every everybody moves. Where's Steve Jabby? He's you on TV. ESPN. Uh, the only, like you just said, the only one that's still reffing in the league is Scott Foster. But it's a other couple names that was dropped out there too. They ain't in the league no more. Shit, I saw one of them. It's a one ref, uh, Joe somebody. Is he doing college? He's doing college now. Yeah, he's doing college. He ref he ref a couple of my games last year with Memphis. I'm like, damn, Mike, that's real odd for you to leave a cushy job. Like the NBA, six figures, first class, every flight, and this and that, da 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 da, and you just leave, you just stop, just disappear. Come on, you're a dummy. You can't put that together. Like, damn, we're stupid. We can't put that together. Come on. <laughs> no, Vaughn. <laughs> we, yeah, we stupid. What do you guys think? I mean, I've been told by two random people that they stopped watching the NBA after Game Seven of the 2000 Western Conference Finals because they thought the officiating. That's two separate people with that game that is a it is a controversially officiated game it's not 2002 lakers kings what did you get well we can talk about either one but what are your is there any did you guys feel like in the moment in 2000 was that just we, we missed shots we lost it or was there some referee bias some something in that fourth quarter that's worth exploring or do we just want to chalk that up to the basketball gods not wanting y'all to to move on I mean, I, I think it was always – she has always kind of put that seat in our head that that element was there. But in my mind, you know, we was playing such good basketball and we just started missing. We really just started missing. Um, I don't know if the refereeing was totally just that, but I, we got to look in the mirror on a lot of that stuff. We just missed mm -hmm. shots. You know, we, we missed shots and we, we had it. But, I mean, you, I, I don't think the refereeing in that – particular moment, especially down the stretch when we were they making that run, got too bad. I mean, it might have been a couple questionable calls if you look at it, but mm -hmm. for the most part, we just missed shots. And that's yep. that's the way I'm going to you know, try to remember it, you know, from my yeah, that's point how, of view. That's how I was. I, I agree mm -hmm. with you with that. Mm -hmm. We, like, I will accept that. Um, but O2, I mean, you played with Mike Bibby, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you guys, you you know C-Web. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming you guys know all most of the players in that O2 team. Yeah, what I saw you light up when I mentioned O2. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that, now that was the fourth quarter too. For our fourth quarter was on us. You know, we, like Bonzi just said, we missed shots. And so I can't I can't even put that loss, I can't even put all of it on Dumb Levy. I can't even put all of it on the referees. I got to put a majority of it on us for that six-minute stretch because we lost the game. We, It was going back and forth, up and down, and we just missed shots. That Lakers Kings, what was it? Twenty five or thirty extra free throws that the Lakers got over them. It was twenty four, I think, but it was something it was like over that. twenty free throws in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was. It was a big discrepancy. Hey, where do you think that came from? You know that the the Kings were a great adversary yeah. to the Lakers. You know they were a big threat because it wasn't us in Portland no more. Our time had come and gone. They broke that team up. So the next one was the Kings, the Bibbs, Vladi, Peja, Webb, Peja, uh, Doug, Christie. So they had a pretty good squad that matched up good with them Lakers. And Vladi, in my opinion, wasn't scared of Shaq. Back then, you know, that Vlade in Sacramento wasn't scared of Shaq. So, I mean, what was that discrepancy? Then you got to look at uh, Dallas Mavericks versus Dwayne Wade. How one guy is going to outshoot from the foul line the whole team. Yeah, that was a crazy And, and you have y'all all All-American all Great White Hope playing, Dirk. And Dirk's not getting no calls. And so that's well. Gray like, White oh. Hope is fair, but he's Ger he is German. So. Yeah, but he's the yeah he's the, he's a he was he was looked at for in our era. A lot of people looked at Dirk as Larry Bird. Yeah, yeah. As they looked at Larry Bird in the eighties, like oh Larry Bird, cold white boy, you know he could shoot, he could play, Indiana boy. And that's how they looked at Dirk in in our era. He was the the bird of your the era. Larry Bird. And I'm like, damn, he ain't even getting no calls. I'm like, it's it's 
it's all setups. Then you gotta start. You, it's a lot of shit people gotta open their eyes to, man. Like how the hell did three out of the five uh, drafts Cleveland get the number one pick, and how none of their number one picks stay? <sighs> I mean, yeah, you guys NBA draft speculation. <sighs> Do you guys talk about that as players? Like, because I know I've talked with Gilbert Arenas about this, right? When they had the guns in the locker room scandal, he said, "Oh, we're getting the number one pick next year for sure." Like he, he knew it mm -hmm. was in his mind. Excuse me, I'm not going to speak for Gil. In his mind, it was a given that the Wizards would get the number one pick, where they obviously took John Wall. So yeah, do you guys, when it comes to top picks, and, and again, I'm not here to argue the the sanctity of the current lottery. I'm I'm guessing it's legitimate. But yeah, did you guys speculate as players? Like, oh, that's a big surprise. I did. I I, I always thought a couple of them, um, them little T balls was lighter than the other ones. Oh in my there. goodness, that stuff was crazy. <laughs> I never understood. I never understood. I mean, I love I love a good conspiracy theory, so I'm never gonna turn that down. But I mean, if you look at the way Stern operated, you can't. That's why I tell people when they ask me about Stern, you can't take anything off the table. You can't. I mean, the human element is always there. Like, he's a human, you know, he's a human. So what do you guys, I mean, Paul Allen, right? Rest in peace, Paul. Yeah. You guys love Paul Allen. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, Paul Allen was cool. Um, David Stern, I know, Bonds, you've told me a story about in the locker room, Stern just ripping he's Paul a Allen, a new asshole, and, and that, because you guys didn't know Stern well. I mean, you might have known him a little, you didn't know him at all. You remember he didn't he, take. Remember he came to the locker room that day? Him. Remember he came to the locker room and he came and was just going off and going crazy on everybody and was just talking shit. And I, that was the first time I ever really seen him, seen him come around. You know, he's a little dude and he was just talking to this one, the, the height of our shit. Mm -hmm. and he was basically telling him, coming in and telling us all to get our shit together. And I'm over here looking at Paul Allen. He, he got more money than everybody. And he, the way he was handling him, I'm over here like looking at this little dude, like, man, this little dude is powerful the way he no, was just, cocky. you know, and just. You know, I know he got the machine of the NBA behind it, but he was just talking so fly to everybody, and I was just like, I really got this hoop shit fucked up. <laughs> like, I really got this shit fucked up because you can't talk to grown men the way you was talking to people because you would get your little ass whooped in real life, you know? So I, I, I wasn't feeling him, you know what I'm saying? I respected him, but I wasn't really feeling the way he handled people because I hate bullies. You know, I hate a fucking bully. And he was a little, you know, kind of bullyish on that day. Complex. On that day, he felt a little bullish. What do you think of Stern, Sheath? Nah, he's not one of my favorite people. <laughs> Y'all don't know this. All-Star game in New Orleans, right? So they got they got both teams in the locker room, the East and the West. And it's, you know, the big ass space and shit, right? So everybody, it's pretty much a horseshoe going around with where everybody's sitting at, right? Stern wanted to talk to everybody. Hey guys, you know, it's the all-star game. You know, we're expecting you guys to do this, do that, blah, 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 right? So after he gave his little speech, you know, he started going around the room. So it's me. Um, I think it was Ray Allen. Paul was over there with KG, Chauncey, and I think um, near uh, uh, Paul was Ben, right? But all in all, we pretty much had this whole little corner commandeer. It was just Pistons and the Celtics, mm -hmm. you know, having that whole corner. I was like, I said, look at this little motherfucker right here. I said, y'all want to see some funny shit? I said, watch this. I said, he ain't going to say shit to me. Yo, went around the whole room. Say he can't hear the Bonzi, shake Bonzi, and hey, yeah, Bonzi, that was, a, that was a good shot you hit the other night, this and that. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker won. Right to the next man right here. Skip right over you. Skip right over me and started talking. Hey, and motherfuckers just started cracking up. I was like, I told y'all. I said, wow. y'all, I said, he don't fuck with me because I call him out on his shit. How the hell, at the time in Portland, Shaq was the most dominant athlete on earth. A man that size to be able to do a lot of the shit he did, yeah. making $19 million a year, and that was a lot of money back then. How the hell is this motherfucker making 25, 26 million in a year, and you're not sacrificing nothing? This dude out there sacrificing his body, you know, might have a bad will today because of it, but how are you making more money than him? Everybody. And then that's when I started to look more. Well, 
he can set his own salary long as the owners agree to it. And that's what happened. That's how his salary the last few years, 30 mil, 30 mil, 32 mil. Like, but what you doing? 